Hey everybody, so I wanted to talk about what you can do in order to get your offer accepted in seller's market. Right now there's very low inventory, but there's a lot of buyers on the market. So in turn, that makes for a really good seller's market, which means that we need to get creative in order to get your offer accepted. So um, one of the biggest things that we have a conversation about when uh, you and I sit down is uh, what to offer on the home and so what I usually like to do is I will pull comps usually six months sometimes less depending on what is coming up within the search criteria so sometimes there's not a whole lot that comes up so I have to go back even further or there's too many that come up so I go back a little bit less just because pricing does change pretty drastically sometimes even within the three month time frame it can change um, but definitely within the six months or more time frame you're looking at a, um, a bigger increase than if you were going um, back only three months to look at comps and with this market it has drastically changed since rates dropped in 2020 um, so the you know the big thing to keep in mind is is since there's so many buyers on the market sometimes there can be so you're gonna be in multiple offer situations so sometimes there can be five offers two offers um, sometimes there can be about 50 or 60 offers as crazy as that sounds so in order to make your offer as strong as possible you'll need to come in at your best and unfortunately in this kind of market comps really don't mean very much they can kind of give you a basis to, as to where maybe it will appraise at um, but really there is no way of telling what homes are going to go for in this kind of market um, homes been have been going for about 10 percent above the listing price so when you're considering placing an offer on a home you'll definitely want to keep that in mind um, I'm not saying for every home they have to do this, but honestly, it's just um, really hard to tell you what exactly other people are offering because there's no way of knowing. And those are certain things that uh, the listing agent isn't necessarily going to tell me about the home. So um, you are the one that decides to uh, what offer you want to place on the home. And so really, you know, as bad as it sounds, it's up to you what you want to um, place on, or you know, what kind of offer you want to place on the home in terms of price. Because the only thing I can advise you is um, as to what the home comps are, whenever it comes to actually what the home will get, get accepted at. Sometimes there's just way, no way of knowing that. So I would just make your best guess. And then um, what I usually tell my clients is make an offer that you're okay with walking away from. So if you want to make an offer for a certain amount, just make sure that that's your walk away price. Uh, another thing that you can do in order to get your home or get your offer accepted is um, there are quite a few other things actually. Um, and I had done a video on this prior, but it definitely warranted a new one um, because there are new things that we are doing now and recommending for our clients to do in offers. Of course, anything that we tell you about it is up to you to do these things. So it's definitely your choice. These are things that we just advise you on. So, um, so back to the offering, you know, the offer price, you can do what's called an escalation clause, which is basically like, it's almost like an eBay bidding situation to where you're like, hey, I'm willing to offer 640, but if this goes up to 6785, I'm willing to go 2,500 to 5,000 over any other offer. You just gotta make it well worth the seller's time in order to pick your offer over theirs. So 2,500 at the bare minimum, but really I would say 5K, maybe even 10K uh, over other offers. And so this allows you to not overbid and then still possibly get selected. Now keep in mind, some listing agents and some sellers don't necessarily like the escalation clause uh, for whatever reason. So just keep that in mind that not everybody likes that, but you know, you can do whatever you want to do. And um, we have been successful in getting our buyers accepted with escalation clauses.
Um, another thing you can do as far as earnest money goes, I would definitely offer the 3%. Don't offer anything less than 3%. I would do that and then also make a portion of that earnest money hard upon acceptance. So that basically means that once they accept your offer, you will make maybe a thousand dollars of that non-refundable should they accept your offer. And that just means that you're willing to move forward with the purchase. And even if you're not, they get to keep that thousand dollars no matter what. It's kind of like a, a benefit to not close, you know, you not closing. Um, just keep in mind that that's aside from the three percent earnest money that the seller may try to keep. Um, so just keep that in mind that that, you know, that's a separate thing. So we can talk about that in a different video. I actually already have one on that, so please be sure to check that out as well. Um, another thing that we're recommending to our clients is coming in with um, some sort of appraisal shortage coverage. So whenever you get accepted on a home, the lender is going to order an appraisal. And whenever they order that appraisal, they're going to make sure that they're getting out of the home what they're lending to you. So should you default, they'll be able to get that money back. Um, but say it comes in, you know, 20 K less than what you were thinking, what you offered, then you're saying you will cover that 20 K, um, shortage no matter what. So even if it comes in, say you offered 670 and it comes in at 650, you're covering that 20 K difference instead of asking the seller to pay for that. So just keep that in mind. Um, you can also waive your appraisal, which I don't, um, really recommend unless you are a hundred percent good you have the amount of funds in order to cover that um, the times where I would recommend um, waiving it is if you're only coming in a little bit above where the um, home is priced at and if comps support a higher price does that make sense it just means that basically you're purchasing the home um, no matter what the appraisal comes back at and so you know, the only times I recommend it is within those times whenever the home is basically worth more than what you're offering on it, and we know that it's gonna come back just fine. So that's one of the things you can do. Um, definitely, if you are gonna have an appraisal um, contingency, then you're going to want to shorten that down. Um, depending on your lender, um, if you're working with one of our preferred lenders or partner lenders, then um, we know what they can do. So we know how far they can go down without risking um, you um, not being able to waive your appraisal contingency in time. So if I know that if you're using one of them, we'll, we'll be good. Um, so usually you can get away with 12 days, 10 days um, for appraisal contingency. And then for loan, you can probably get away with um, 12 or 10 or 15 um, as opposed to the 21 day, which that just helps with going through and getting your loan approval um, in order to remove that, that loan contingency. Um, of course, you could also remove your loan contingency if that's something that you're willing to do. That just means that no matter what happens, if you get your loan approved or not, you're moving forward with that. So those are a couple things that you can do as far as that goes. Another thing that I would recommend is for um, for repairs slash credits. Now you are buying the home as is, so that means that you're purchasing it in its um, current condition and you are not going to be asking for any repairs or any credits. I would definitely recommend doing that, especially in this market. The seller wants to know that they have a client or they, they chose a buyer that wants to close on the home. And so they want to make sure that, you know, if they choose you, you're gonna close no matter what. And so I would completely remove asking for any repairs or credits. That does not mean that if you did your inspection and something came back that was huge, um, and huge, I'm talking about major, major issues. I'm not just talking about an outlet isn't working. I'm talking like, major like foundation issues or something um, and not you know just small things around the house because there's probably gonna be a whole page or two of lists of things that are wrong with the home that just is is what it is and that's what happens with the homes nowadays um, or not even nowadays this just happens with the homes because if people are living in it so things can be wrong but that's one thing to help or you can waive a certain amount up to like maybe five thousand 
if repairs come in $5,000 or less, that means that you're moving forward with a purchase no matter what and you won't ask for credits or repairs um, lower than that. Now, if something comes back as like a 10K repair, that means that you know, you're gonna ask for it. Doesn't necessarily mean that the seller's gonna cover that amount or cover that repair. That just means that you will ask for that as opposed to asking for less than 5,000, which is usually pretty nitpicky items um, anyway. So you definitely want to keep that in mind whenever you're offering on the home. Um, another thing that you can do is making your closing period shorter. Uh, typical, it's 30 days. I recommend doing shorter, maybe like 21 days or even less if you know that you're gonna be you know, pretty quick to do everything. Once the lender asks you to turn in paperwork, you're turning it in that same day um, and just making sure you're you know, on time with everything. So um, those are a couple things to keep in mind whenever you're making your offer. Um, and then also really shortening down your inspection window. And that isn't just for the physical inspection, that's for everything, you know, the neighborhood, schools, zoning, square footage, inspecting all aspects of the property, basically. So um, I would recommend probably seven or 10 days the shorter you can do the better because then that means that if you back out the seller can put it back on the market so just keep those things in mind whenever you're making those offers and then also keep in mind too that if that sometimes the seller needs to stay in place for a certain period so it's called either a seller in place or a lease back depending on how long if it's less than 30 days it's a seller in place if it's more than 30 days um, it only can be up to 60 days but if it's more than 30 days, it's a seller lease back. I would offer that to the um, seller for free if possible, just because especially if it's like a 30 days or less, you're not paying your mortgage until one month after you close. So um, keep that in mind um, to in order to make your offer stronger because it really, really does help. We just got somebody accepted um, that was offering the seller a free 60 day lease back. So those things really, really do um, help. Um, just trying to think of what else we covered. We covered most of the items, waiving appraisal and loan and covering inspection amounts, free lease back, earnest money going hard. All of those items are really, really gonna help you whenever you're placing offers, especially in this kind of market. Oh, and waiving your home warranty because here sellers usually provide a free you know, we're able to get you a free one year home warranty. However, that's only like five or $600. So if you can just waive that, you can always purchase it after the fact. Um, so after you close, you can purchase a one year home warranty. We have one um, and we bought that on our own as homeowners. So some, that's something that you can do as well to make your offer stronger. And also not asking for a whole lot. So don't ask for refrigerator, washer, dryer, the TV, the spa, you know, all of those items. Don't ask for all of the items that aren't necessarily um, included because those are considered personal property. So in order to make the strongest offer possible, those are the recommendations that we have. And um, of course, like I said, we'll make the re recommendations. It's up to you whether or not you wanna take those recommendations or not, but we just wanna make sure that you had that in your back pocket in order to make the best offer possible.